I have a theory I want to test. I think if I put this filter on my guide scope, I might be able to improve my guiding performance. So what is this filter and why do I think it's going to help improve my guiding? All guide scopes are refractors, obviously, but that also means they suffer from something called chromatic focus shift, where they cannot focus all wavelengths um, at the same time. So they can only focus on a specific range of wavelengths um, because the different wavelengths have different like indexes of refraction, so they bend at different angles through the glass lenses, meaning they have different focus points at different lengths. This is very, very common. But if we now take a look at the quantum efficiency graph for a guide camera, so that is how um, effective the camera is at converting light into data at different wavelengths, we can see that it has this long tail out in the, um, in the infrared, and it also, as shown, continues out towards the ultraviolet. So my theory is, since the camera, if there's no filters and all the light go through, since the camera is actually sensitive out in quite long regions, that light out in the UV and the infrared, that's gonna be out of focus because the cam we can't focus all the wavelengths at the same time. That's gonna cause the stars to look bloated um, or maybe have a little bit more fuzzy of an edge. And maybe that means that the guiding software is having a harder time determining the exact location. So, as you probably guessed now, this is a UV IR cut filter. So this is a filter that removes ultraviolet and infrared light and only lets through visible light. So my theory is, put this on a guide scope and see if we can get more pinpoint stars than we could before and if that's going to help improve our guiding. To start with, I'm going to run a baseline test where I want to see what kind of guiding performance I get out of my setup without the filter installed. But first, I'm going to run through my standard guide scope focusing routine. Um, if you haven't watched my video where I go through the process I usually do when I do this, then I'll link it at the end of this video. You can go and, and watch that. But essentially, just I'm using my ASIR here to just try and get as a pinpoint focus as I can. After the guide scope was focused, I'm going to be running a polar alignment routine and I'm going to do this every time I have touched the telescope because as soon as I begin to mess around with it and turn on things I'm likely going to knock it out of its polar alignment so I'm going to be re-polar aligning between every test just to make sure we get a as accurate result um, as possible. So I ran through a very standard um, polar alignment and got a what I actually think is a pretty decent result. I noted this down so that the next time I'm going to try to see if I can get a as similar error on my polar alignment as I did with the, with this one, just to try and make sure we are doing this as apples to apples as possible. Once this was done, I found a, a star to slew to, slew to it, and then I again cleared all my previous calibrations because, again, I've had the camera taken out of the guide scope, and that means the rotation of the camera might be slightly different, so I can't reuse my um, my guiding calibration from previous. As soon as you touch that uh, that guide scope, you need to recalibrate. And that means this also needs to be recalibrated between every test. So, running through the standard recalibration and just started up the guiding with the settings that I've been using with the setup up until now. I gave it a few minutes just to give it time to settle in and just to get into a good rhythm. And it's very common that in the first like few seconds of, uh, of guiding, maybe up to 20, 30 seconds, that it can be a little wobbly, a little unstable until it kind of settles into uh, to an even. So pretty much waited until I got a constant result and the total error wasn't fluctuating too much anymore. The whole thing kind of settles in at like 0.5 arc seconds of uh, total guiding error, um, which is actually pretty good. I'm really happy with the with that result, and I know this setup is, is, is capable of, of, of guiding pretty well, so I'm happy with that. And that's now our baseline. So now we know that's the number to be, 0.5 arc seconds of total error. Now we basically just run the entire process again. I take the guide scope, I'll take the guide camera out of the guide scope, we install the filter, onto the scope, reinsert it, and then again, run through the entire process again. Now, first of all, when I was refocusing it, I was expecting that I was gonna be able to get a more, a sharper focus now. That's kind of the whole premise of the video is that we'll be able to get sharper stars by removing some of that light that I think would be out of focus. 
Now, despite my best effort, I couldn't really get something that was comparable. But again, to be honest, I wasn't necessarily guiding, uh, focusing on the same star between each focusing test. So I couldn't really be sure that uh, that the numbers were really comparable. So I wasn't really too worried about not being able to get the same like size of the star that the SIR displays because it depends on how bright the star is. The brighter the star, the bigger it's gonna look. So I wasn't too worried about that, but I did what I usually did. I tried to focus it as good as I could. And after that, it was back to polar aligning again. And it was good that I did. As you can see here, it did get knocked ever so slightly out of its perfect polar alignment. I messed around with it for a bit and I managed to get something that was spot on the exact same um, pole alignment error as I had with my first pole alignment attempt. So I'm really happy with that, indicating that at least that should not be a noticeable error um, in our testing here. And after that, we're slewing back to the same star as we used before when we were doing our initial baseline guiding test. Now I'm keeping all the settings identical between these two tests because I want to make sure that we get something that is as apples to apples as possible here. So no settings um, was changed between these two. Exactly the same guide setting, settings, same, um, same gain, same everything was exactly the same. I then once again cleared my calibration to again because the camera has now been either the guide scope and reinserted so it could have been rotated so that means i need to recalibrate my guiding so clear the guide um, guide calibration from earlier and recalibrate with the camera setting once again i gave it some time to kind of get a chance to uh, to settle in and this is where i began to be a little bit puzzled because now no matter how long I gave it to settle in, it would settle in around 0.6, which is worse than the 0.5 it had before. So for some reason, we had a 20% increase in our, um, in our total guide error by adding this filter. I thought, surely I must have done something wrong because I, in my mind, this should work. I mean, I was half expecting that maybe I would see no results, but seeing worse results, I was definitely not expecting. So I actually ran through the whole thing again, refocused the guide scope, repolar aligned the thing, slewed it back and slewed it out again, recalibrated guiding and tried again. And I got the same result. So at this point, I then thought, okay, maybe this new, um, maybe the new like, configuration with this filter, it needs slightly like tweaked settings in order to run optimally. So I began also tweaking some of the settings to see if I could improve the guiding by making slight alterations. But no matter what I did, um, it just refused to be any better than 0.6. I could not get the guiding with the filter installed lower than 0.6. So does this mean that this was a terrible idea from the start? Not necessarily. All it means is that I was just not able to replicate some of the results that I've seen others get because I've been reading around forums and people have been talking about them using filters exactly like this and actually seen slight improvements in their guiding. And I wanted to see if I could, could do the same. What caused me to get worse guiding using this filter? I honestly don't know. But I would love to know what you guys think. First of all, have any of you guys tried to use a filter like this on your guide scope? And have you seen positive results? Then let me know and tell me about your setup. What kind of equipment are you using? And how much improvement did you see? And if you have any other explanation why I got the results that I did. Also, I would love to hear it in the comment section. Because right now I'm a little puzzled. I'm not sure I've given up on the idea yet. I might have to run the test again another night. Just to see if this was a fluke. Um, but... Let me know. I am curious to see what you guys think. The first thing you want to do is you want to go in and remove any dew shields or anything else you have that would interfere with. Now we need to talk about what's called quantum efficiency. Now the quantum efficiency is essentially just for each photo.